Welcome back. You've probably seen this little contest before. If not, it's my fault for not uploading the previous video. Although I didn't think the previous video was particularly exciting anyway. Uh, but yeah, here's a contest where the object is to determine on turn 20 of a game of OMG words, what's the score that's going to be played by the player on turn 20 as determined through a hundred thousand or some number of games that were downloaded from uh, from Woogles.io, the premier site for playing OMG words, the orthogonal morpheme words game. Um, some people call it Scrabble, but the copyright version, copyright free version of it is OMG words, so that's what I'm concerning myself with. Anyway, uh, the object is to determine on turn 20, regardless of how many tiles are on the player's rack, or you're given a lot of information, like what all the previous 19 plays were, as well as what the tiles are on the player's rack on turn 20, um, and as whose turn it is to move. And incidentally, whose turn it is to move could also be the same person whose turn it was to make turn 19 because the player on turn 20 uh, might have to take back their turn 19 play. That's just how the data set's constructed. It's, I don't know, I think it's kind of a weakness of the data set that you're expected to... I don't know. It's the most trivial form of parsing that you just look and see if turns 19 and 20 are the same player, and if so, deduct the score of 19. And that's the score on turn 20. But uh, that anomaly aside, you've got all the previous 19 plays and can try to do some machine learning or whatever you want to do on this. This contest is not particularly exciting because, uh, one, you could look up all these games on Woogles and figure out exactly what the scores were. And two, well, I guess... Uh, twofold. One, uh, that half the things you'll be predicting are by a bot, where you could download the source code of the bot and run it on every one of those positions and see exactly what it would play. Um, and so based on what it would play, you could count up the score for that turn and, you know, that would be your prediction. Uh, but two, um, even in cases where turn 20 isn't played by a bot, humans will uh, select most of the time from valid plays. So it's up to you to figure out like what the valid plays are. And for that, you need to construct the board and you have a dictionary available. And it's not the most interesting problem. Um, I mean, sometimes humans will play an invalid play in turn 20 and turn 21, they'll have to take it back. You'll have cases where you just can't really predict what's going to happen. But um, anyway, I was curious. I was trying to load my code into this code section and couldn't find any way to link my, no, uh, what do they call it, a workbook, a notebook? I could not find a way to link mine here. However, other people have linked their things here. So, um, probably not a terrible idea to start with one of these and see you can load the input files and print them out. And that's cool. So with that in mind, uh, we could take some of this and take some of the notebooks that we worked on for our machine learning challenge a year or something ago and mesh them together and see if we could produce a prediction that probably is less accurate than what I've done on my local machine. But just do this all in the browser using Kaggle's stuff. So how do we check out? Oh, copy and edit. There we go. That's probably the button. There we go. And assuming this actually downloads the stuff, yeah. The other day I went through the trouble... Oh, really? Okay, that's for the correct competition. Uh, language is Python. 
Can we see the data files? Yes, we have a good selection of data files. Uh, the other live stream, uh, I had gone through great pains to upload the data files after having downloaded them. It was a mess. But, um, yeah, here we've got this Scrabble starter. Uh, I already want to edit the name of it. But maybe it's not so easy to edit. I don't know. Edit. Nope. Can't do anything. Can I rename it here? There we go. And can we run all? And see, this just loads all the files. I assume this runs in the browser. I assume that, like, this Kaggle website doesn't have an infinitude of resources just readily available. So, we'll see whether or not this does anything. Session started. All right, and we see here's all the files and captions with them. Oh. Okay, so beyond the, there's a second code cell, and I just didn't pay any attention. Here's code cell 1, result 1. Code cell 2, test. Okay. So, oh, I see. All these are, all these variables are assigned values, and then train is called at the end of this to print out the first of these. I see. I was wondering if train here was a variable or a command or what. It's a variable. There's nothing special that I... Uh, all right. So we focus on turn round is equal to 20 and user is equal to better bot. Um, hang on. Didn't I do a run all? Why? Okay. Here's the mean for, yeah. Oh, I see. And then this produces a file submission.csv. Just focusing, uh, <laughs> the sample code gives us a baseline that's better than the baseline of the contest. Now we've written this to a CSV. Um, let's do one more thing just to complete the mean. So we're going to say submission is equal to read file submission.csv. Um, and I mean, maybe we don't need to assign that to a variable. Maybe we do. I don't know. What would be easiest for us to read? I don't know. So. After we finished run all, we should see uh, the submission file that we've generated here also, which I think is going to be incomplete because this is only focusing on um, plays where the training data, hang on. Sample submission for points is equal to train at address this thing points dot mean. Okay. So it just assigns all of the plays here the mean. That's so weird. How can this be the same dimension as the other thing? Um, or is this a comment and not code? Yeah, this looks like a comment down here. Uh, I want to add a code block. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. And I don't know how to delete this thing, the cell. This seems like a dumb little cell here. Yeah, I think the point here was to point out that you could add additional cells, but this particular cell was empty. 
There we go. Now we've got syntax highlighting and stuff. You know, I probably could have just run the final cell. That's okay. So, yeah, this assigns every uh, thing in the output points of uh, this average, which is not perfect. Um, hmm. So, yeah, there's a better way to do this. Wait, no, okay, I'm sorry. Game ID and points are established here. There's not an obvious way to reference game IDs by player name. Um, so here's, let me go back up here. Train is equal to training data. Test is equal to test data. Um, which does not include, no, it does include whose turn it is. Yeah, so we need to reference the test data to find on turn 20, whose play is it? Um, so that's the dilemma. Now, this says game ID 25924, uh, which is here. There we go. Um, Now, I understand that they trained one model on the bot. Might as well train a separate model on human play, right? Um, hang on. This just loads all the files. Oh, I see. Mean, there was no training that occurred. I see. This is just a projection of this. Uh, yeah, I see. Train, train, etc. dot mean. This just prints out a number, and this here recomputes that same number. Uh, okay, okay. Um, so, I mean, we don't necessarily need to assign this to a variable and then repeat ourselves, but um, there's no harm in it. So what we need to do now is figure out how to iterate over um, test, because test is what contains the player name on a given turn. Let's see. For, uh, it, oh, wait, isn't there a variable already called game? There's sample submission, there's games. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> That's fine. I guess turn is the unit that we're talking about in each the train and test file, so let's focus on turn. For turn in uh, test, if, do, 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 what's our column name? What's our column name? Turn underscore number is equal to 20. Then, and the better bot is the name. Okay. Um, Then game ID is equal to whatever we said the game ID here is. I think it's game ID. No, it's game underscore ID probably. Um, sample submission at point. Oh, hang on. This is where things get ugly. 
Um, so, hmm. This gets so ugly. All right. So, let's see. Yes, it's equal to this. Yes, game ID is equal to. Well, no, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Game uh, bot dot append. Uh, let's see. Game ID. Actually, we could do better. Um, so we could produce a map here. So if the turn number is equal to 20, uh, we could, let's see, name at turn game ID is equal to turn name. So that should help us figure out for each, um, or nickname is the field name, rather, but that's the concept anyway. There we go. I'm in the wrong category in this service, am I not? Yeah, let's do it this way. Put the uh, game category as software development. Uh, And I guess we'll also create a name 19, just for completeness sake, because I think we're going to need this. So, there we go. Sample submission of points is equal to better bot. Um, oh, right. So the next thing we wanted to do is for turn in oh, sample submission. And really, I think we could rename this to submission. Um, So, I know we loaded this from a file called sample underscore submission, but we're repurposing this as something that we will submit. Okay. If um, name, no, I'm sorry, yeah, if name 20 at address of submission. is equal to better bot. Um, there we go. Uh, let's see. Something like that. Let's see, do, have I broken anything in some... Oh, right, game ID is our link. Have I broken anything else? Yes. Um, string indexes must be integers. String indices must be integers. What does this mean?
All right. Does anybody know how to use pandas? Because <laughs> I don't. Um, we're going to have to look up a guide, I guess. Oh, wait, no. Here, this is comparable to 20. So this is comparable to 19. This is comparable to 20. Yeah, there we go. Uh, does this run now? No. Oh, turn here is a string. How is turn a string? How do I iterate over the rows in test? Let's see. Uh, pandas, Python, row iterator. Sure. Iter rows or rows? Something like this, maybe? Data frame has no attribute rows. All right. Um, Answer, don't. Iterations and anti-pattern. <sighs> yeah. I'm just lazy, honestly. I don't care about performance in this case. I really don't. In many cases, with many things, you would strongly care about performance. Um, tuple slices must be integers or slices, not stir. Or indexes in a tuple. Well, I mean, I do know how to um, extract the turn number from the tuple, probably. Uh, uh, oh, list comprehensions. Yeah, those aren't bad. Um, oh, okay, so that's fine. I'm okay with this. No. I'm wanting to slice the data based on turn number and also nickname. I'm wanting a two-column slice. Does this offer a two-column slice? Yes, it does. All right, whatever. Oh, goodness. I can't believe this is... This can't possibly be the best way to do this. Um, oh, but I also need the game ID. This is unwieldy. This is most unwieldy. All right. So I don't understand the difference between uh, iter rows and iter items. So 
zero game ID, etc. Turn number one. Okay, yeah, I don't need the column headings. Oh, gosh darn it. So I have to study pandas to be able to use pandas. This is annoying. I want the projection that is uh, the game ID and the nickname from the data frame where turn number is equal to 20. I know how to do this in SQL. I really want like the value out of every row. So for the novice, apply or vectorization, fine. Um, oh, iterating over multiple columns of the same data type. You could do it this way. Or of differing data type. Oh, you could zip more than two things together. I didn't know Python had zip with multiple, but... Um, they were saying use apply for novices. I'm entirely fine with that, but... Um... Apply map. So it, this takes a function and runs it across the elements. It's not exactly what I'm looking for. Apply map is kind of cool. It sounds nice. Element-wise, to a function. Um, oh, but that's not it either. I'm not wanting this. I'm wanting to take from the row what is the mapping of um, over the specified axis? See, I don't think that's it either. Yeah, I'm not wanting that at all. This is such a I mean, maybe there's something special about what I'm trying to do. I'm not, to my knowledge, trying to do anything tricky. Iter tuples and iter items. Column name series pairs. Okay. Iterates over the data frame columns, returning a tuple with the column name and the content as a series. Um, oh, named tuples? That's not terrifying. I'm okay with that. Iterate over the frame rows as index comma series pairs. I don't understand from this documentation what this does. Okay, so index is equal to dog, legs is four, wings is zero. Index is equal to hawk, legs is... So by setting the index parameter to false, you can remove the index as the first element of the tuple. Um, hmm. Now, I don't know when reading these... Oh, goodness. I hope that this works. For some definition of works. All right, so...
index 0, game ID 2, turn number 1, etc. Okay. Now how do I access the things out of this tuple? We've got named tuples, but we're saying we can't access the elements this way. That the indexes must be integers or slices, not stir. But also these are named. So why can't I access them by name? Why do I have to access them by index? Also, no, here is the index. Um, so the internal index is not useful in this case. But Okay, so turn. Let's try print a turn at address is uh, one. What do I get there? I get a one. It's the turn number. Well, I don't care how pretty the code is, so we're going to make do with this, even though I think it's nonsense. I think I sh like, there's no reason things need to be this tricky. Um, this is so error prone. Oh, right. Elif turn. So if the ordering of columns in the spreadsheet changes, all this code breaks. Um, so next, do we have a way to iterate through the data frame and update the rows? I mean, I'm fine with doing this to read and get like the name on turn 19 and name on turn 20. Fine. I'm not happy about it, but I can, it works. So... Uh, I don't need that right now. And does update row uh, by condition, really. What? I'm trying to update not a column. I'm trying to update things where a value in a cell in a row is equal to something, then update the value in a different cell or element in that same row. Um, um, modify row by condition. So, this is an obsession over columns, and that's not useful. Loc to ch okay, I guess this is the way to do it. Where the stream is number two. Yeah, there we go. Is this it? So... I'm so confused. Oh. Hang on. Oh, this is a set of conditions? And then we can set the value on the right. Although I'll have a complex expression on the right. That's computed based... Man, this is so crazy. <sighs> Why? Good God. How does anybody use this library to do non-trivial things? 
Um, Because like here they show, if you just want to update everything to this value, this is how you do it. The problem is that what if you want to update a value here um, based on like double this or use this as an index in some other table to get the value and put it back in here. This is not how Pandas was designed. Um, do I need to like make a completely new data frame? This is crazy. I get that there are reasons to write functional programming, but like this forces the paradigm on you. Um, I hope you find this. No, we don't find it. Well, okay. Actually, this is going to be painful as hell, but it's okay. So... trying to think about this yeah Hmm. It turn. Wait. Hang on. Name twenty at address. Oh, actually, it should be game ID. Then do some stuff here. We're gonna set. Um, submission at this location, um, so where this game ID is equal to game ID, we want to set the other feature in the row. points equal to bot average. Maybe this works. Maybe this doesn't work. Nope. Oh, cool. Here. Name 19 at turn 0 is equal to turn 2. Oh. Okay, how do we put an a thing into a dictionary? Do we have to use append for that? Dictionaries, sets. Oh, we're using a dictionary. So I thought I could just put a thing into the dictionary like this. I was certain I could, but it failed. Something failed on my line of code. Name 19 of turn 0 double equal turn two. Nope. Assign it the value of turn two. My mistake. All right. Next. Key error game it. Uh, shit. 
submission loc submission game id equal to game id. oh it's because it's game underscore id okay now if we run all does something happen there we go and we can discriminate between those turns that were played by a bot and those which were played by a human. And we're missing lots of entries here. This is supposed to have more than 777 rows, isn't it? No, it ends the correct value. Perhaps the dimension of this is correct. So let's save this as version 1. Sure. Advanced settings. Uh, do, do, do. I have no idea. Version 1. Save and run all. There we go. I don't recall whether or not these are publicly visible or whatever. Um, now, there will be one other condition that we want to mix into this. And that is the simple check of if the value on turn 19 is equal to the value on turn 20. Then we want to do something else which is special. Um, so... <sighs> How do we get the value... Let's see. If name 19 of game ed is equal to name 20 of game ed. We'll set this to zero initially, but zero is incorrect. Um, In this case, we actually need to get the value out of um, the test data for turn 19 and negate it. Because 19 was an, inv uh, an invalid play. So what else do we have here? Um, hmm. <laughs> I mean, we could. This is so hokey. So, what were the values in here again? So, here we have game ed, turn number, nickname, rack, location, move, points. Points is the one of interest here. So this is index, uh, goodness, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oh, let's stop. Uh, stop this, please. Alt, desist, quit, cancel. Stop. Well, we fucked up. Now it's just going to run forever and attempts to cancel execution are failing. I guess that's the sign of a good program is that it just never ends. All right, is there any way for me to regain control over this? Maybe if I refresh the page, it'll come back. Let's try that. All right, I hit my refresh. Hey, uh, yeah, let's do that. So hopefully, no, shit, cancel. All right. Uh, let's see. 
don't print turn anymore. Let's just run all without printing that. And maybe things will complete this time. There we go. Um, so index six. There we go. And this is going to be equal to negative points 19 of game ed. There we go. Um, does this, is this valid Python? It executes. All right. Um, so now if we run all, maybe we get a slightly different answer. Well, that's a thing. Um, now note, way the hell up here, uh, pandas and numpy have both been imported. We haven't done anything interesting in terms of machine learning yet. I know we've done a lot in terms of data processing, but I don't think any real machine learning has taken place here. Oh, that's funny. I don't easily get to see these values here. Um, do I get to explore this in a browser somehow? No, nope. if I really wanted to look at this file, I'd have to download it. Touche, Kaggle. All right, here. This is a way for me to know if something happens, right? Fuck, that's a lot of games. If I count this, oh my gosh. What the hell was the play that caused this? All right, so... Hmm. <laughs> Alright, so we see that zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. No, just kidding, that's the index. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six is the points. Five is the move, four is the location, three is the rack. Wait, is the play not enumerated? Why is the play miss? No, here's the play. It's in column five. It's called move, but it's actually the play. All right. Um, I mean, I'm just a little bit skeptical, so we're going to see like what this is that we're dealing with. Um, Also, name 19 game ed and name 20 game ed, I, sure. Just making sure that I did this right. Yeah, that's the list of names, all right. So it's definitely not better bot that's making most of the invalid plays. Do some of these look like words? Um, yeah, these more these look like non-words more than they look like words. Um, or they could have a even if the word is valid, like axis, perhaps it didn't fit in the spot and created in some other kind of thing. But yeah, these some of these at least look dubious. So I can accept that. Um, yeah, that this includes a healthy sample of invalid plays. 
All right, so um, yeah, if we wanted to do machine learning stuff, I guess what we've learned is don't use pandas for the machine learning, use NumPy. <laughs> NumPy is awesome. Um, we'll figure it out, but I am exhausted at this point. Having just figured out how to, well, hang on. So now we got the bot average. Um, let's see. I guess let's also throw in here a uh, human average. And it would be great if I could actually sum up um, things like that. So, yeah, I guess we want to say else in this case. Um, something like this. Is this valid Python? Nope, because I didn't run this thing first. Very funny. Uh, what? Um, <clears throat> pretty sure I did define human average right here. Did I not? Am I dumb? All right. Um, hmm. I guess only the final value in a cell. Um, only the final values printed. So there we go. That's better. And then this becomes valid. Yeah, that looks okay. Now, I could have sworn 26.91. Hmm. 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 <laughs> Okay, we have 27.77. Oh, hang on. I could actually compare these numbers to the numbers up here. 26.06. .06. So this is not quite correct. Um, is there any way to correct it? Oh, right. I have to reprint the submission to see the new values. That's what I have to do to update this. Now note, this actually includes the negative values, which I'm not wanting to include in this average because I've already accounted for the negative values uh, over here. So um, where the turn number is 20, and the name is not better bot. And train. Oh, hang on. And train points. Um, is greater than or equal to zero. Assuming that's a valid condition. It might not be. 26.06. .06. Oh! All right, so the points scored by a human on an average turn and by the bot on an average turn are extremely similar. Probably because the players who play against the bot the most... Um, uh, what am I trying to say? They're the one who scored the most points. So... If a player is having an extremely rough time against the bot, they probably don't play a ton of games against this particular bot. They pick a different one. But the typical human opponent for this bot actually scores roughly the same number on turn 20 as the bot does. Now, the next thing that could be fun here, I mean, yes, we have mean here, but I want to get 
a mapping of player names to scores on turn 20. Because I think that could get me a lot further here. Um, now, some human names might not appear in the training data, so we still need this human average. But um, there's got to be a way with pandas to get a mapping of, or an aggregation. See, this is where... Uh, <laughs> oh, goodness. So, how do we do this? Python pandas group by mean. Mean, that's what I meant to do. Uh, compute mean of groups. <sighs> what? Come on. Um, mean by name. There's got to be some way to do this. I appreciate the technical documentation for those who've got all day to read it. I just want something in plain English to tell me how the fuck to do this. So, yeah, now we have columns A, B, C, D. That's not what I'm trying to do. What I'm trying to do is aggregate data by player name. Um... And then after having aggregated by player name, then do something more interesting. Group by animal. There we go. Let's see, I just had to find the right page in the documentation. So, yeah. Uh, train dot group by nickname dot mean. I want to assign this to something player or average. So let's take a look. There we go. That's way more fun. Um, so, okay, um, and better bot is also in this, right? No? <laughs> what? Um, I'm just dumb. Hmm. Player average, where... Is this how we do a projection? I don't know projections in pandas. But we want this projection... Or, okay. So, index at where function of player average better bot... Or, I'm sorry. Nick name is equal to better bot. That's not valid either. <sighs> Come on. What am I missing? Player average Select by player average of nickname is equal to better bot and select clause and index. Like, what have I missed? It's the same damn thing that they did up there, it just doesn't work when I do it.
What have I missed? Okay, I'm going to read the error. I'm going to make some attempt to read the error message. As ill-fated as this seems. Key error nickname. Now... How do I identify the keys that are in this? I don't know how to identify the keys that are... Uh, so... The existing training guide that was on Kaggle had to do with NumPy, not with pandas. Uh, wait, also, I'm not trying to find the mean of all columns. I'm trying to find the mean of points. So, something was not entirely perfect with this, even, oh, fuck, I navigated back a page. Give me back my notebook. So, there was something that wasn't entirely perfect about this already. In that, like, this is showing game ID average, turn number average, etc. This is not what I was looking for. Um, oh, hang on. So, yeah. Something like this. As a selector. Okay, that's more like it. So you have a nickname, and we have points. Now I'm confused. Name is points, length 622, data type float 64. So that's strictly speaking just about the points. Um... Yeah, I'm wanting the mean, but also keep the key there, because I need the key. Um, okay. Yes, yeah, so this shows the mean for each key here. Um, but we can see that this... Hmm, yes, yeah, so if I try to do the same sort of thing... But if I try to substitute in player AVG right there, and if I try to simplify this selector to have just the one criterion, um, this is not good anymore because nickname is lost at the point that mean is applied. I don't know how to get uh, this key back. Um, I 
Yeah, keep the column name. That's not it. Keep other columns. Okay. You can do ag on a group. Specifies what operation should be performed on each column. Hmm. I've done the group by name. And so... Oh, okay. Um... Yes, index false. Otherwise, all the columns in the list get used in the index. Okay, we can try this. Wait, where's an example of this? Yeah, so after the columns to group by are specified, then at this point, um, we want that. Oh, hang on. But that's saying that nickname's an index. Okay, whatever. Um... Yeah, so there's better bot and it's 26.60 average, which actually doesn't match up. This 26.60 was the average of all the scores, not just better bots scores. So this is not useful here. So we'll try AGG instead to see if this produces a more accurate output. Um, so this needs a dictionary of what operations to perform on which columns. We only have two columns of interest. Nickname first and points average. So this is not going to be good at all. <laughs> um, player AVG. So I don't think we have a column nickname that can be aggregated at this point. Yeah, I've severely confused myself. Uh, before all that, though, uh, I assume it's mean rather than average. Yeah, so I was mistaken. Um, but probably mean is actually accurate. Probably nickname should remain the index here. And I'm needing a way to access this as the index. All right. So still we have incorrect results. Um, like here I'm trying to get better bots value out of this. But we know that better bots... Oh. Oops, I forgot. When grouping, I needed to drop under this condition. Um, so we need to select this projection first. 
that's why I have such a strange value there. 27.7749, etc. So that matches what we had for better bot up here. Good. Progress at last. Um, now, how do I check? Like, here we've got bot AVG, human AVG, etc., etc., but. Like, if I were to try to do player average at index of uh, name 20 of game ID and try to use the points value out of, well, yeah, no, there is the points value. It's the only value in the cell. So... Yeah, I've already run this. Having run this, if I try to run this, we're going to get a key error uh, that CSJ Woogles was not in the training data. And that's what I'm going to try to figure out next. Is um, how do we address that particular situation? Uh, wow, that's a lot of lookups here that I've introduced, isn't it? But that should be a really small array, or a really small map. This should execute quickly. All right, let's run all and see at the very end of this what does submission look like. Um, yeah, so you have a lot of values in there. Uh, we no longer require such an extensive mess of variables here. We don't need a bot AVG. There we go. Uh, let's see. <laughs> now if a player appears in the training data, yeah, I still want to omit negative score plays on turn 20, because those are counted for under a separate rule. So this is valid Python, right? Yep, that's valid Python. So if we run all. We should get our submission printed out here momentarily, and we do. So the next question is, Rather than checking if name is equal to better bot, how do we check if index, I don't know. How do we check if an index exists in this thing? Um, and does check if key exists. Yeah, check if a value exists in a pandas data frame index. Okay, so we just use the in keyword. Works for me. Uh, do, do, do. So we're going to check if this is in index. There we go. Is this valid? Looks valid to me. All right, can I see the new submission values? All right, well, works for me. Now we haven't done anything interesting at all. We're just saying take the mean value for each player and dump that out here, except in cases where turns 19 and 20 have the same player name. This is extremely, I don't know, simple. Like, there's no machine learning of interest occurring here. We've not had to resort to developing a non-trivial model. The only model we're using uses all of the training data 
and takes the mean value out of the training data and that's what you got. Um, some players on turn 20 have a low mean. It is what it is. Um, mm -hmm. So the other thing we could do that might be somewhat interesting is rather than using perhaps a really small sample size there, um, I wonder, can we say 18 less than or equal to, and then less than or equal to 22? Could this be of some interest? Is this even a valid expression? In Python, you can do compound expressions this way, but uh, this, yeah. They don't care for it that way. Um, so rather, we're just going to combine things this way. This is valid, right? Yep. All right. I don't know why I can't do a compound comparison and make that a conditional, but fine. So for turns between 18 and 22, uh, consider those kind of in the same bucket. And we have some kind of magic sauce there, right? Now, a question would be, like, which of these better fit the test data? I don't know. I'm not even sure that it matters too much. Um, oh, crap. <laughs> yeah, let's try it this way, shall we? So outliers are still going to heavily weigh on this stuff. Um... Didn't I hit the run all button? I thought I hit run all. But yeah, here we have turn number greater than or equal to 18 and less than or equal to 22. This still, like, there's some low values in here. There's some really high values in here. Um, so based on which player was playing a game, we can make some predictions to what we think they'd score. Um... And I don't really know, like, where the sweet spot is for finding, um, for dealing with outliers, but also not allowing some ridiculous number of points to be scored. I don't know. Um, so probably between... 18 and 22 is fine. If we get too far out into the game, it becomes too much of the end game. If we take place too early in the game, we're going to get too many bingos. Although, who knows where bingos will exactly happen, but still. Uh, points 19, name 19. Okay. Um, yeah, so if a player doesn't appear in our training data, then um, it's okay. <sighs> so I guess that's as good as that's going to get, eh? Let's save this version. Sure. Version 2, save and run all. Now this is extremely dumb approach, right? Um, but you can open this in the viewer. Eventually we can take this. It, it produces a submission file. We could take this submission file, actually submit it. Given that all we're doing is taking an average, it's not going to outperform our previous model unless somehow 
there's some very very strong cor uh, correlation between player rating or like that player's performance game after game is extremely consistent for most players mm -hmm. if that's not the case then yeah this is just not going to perform well at all but you know it might perform well we have a submission file it looks valid to me um uh, yeah, let's bookmark it. Um, and let's submit it. Sure. All right, let's take a look, see how that sucked. Just out of curiosity. Um, all right, jump to my position. So this is, hang on. Yeah, so my latest entry scored 19.71, which actually would land you in uh, fifth place or sixth place here. I took this guy's uh, trivial example, slightly expanded upon it to account for each player having a different model just averaged how much does a player score between turns 18 and 22. Um, I also account for when words are having to be withdrawn from the board. And yeah, that's where we're at. My homegrown model that is closed source for now, I guess, because I don't have a good way to publish it, um, under or outperformed what we just did here. Because... Yeah, the submission I just submitted. Um, can I see my submissions? Yeah. So I had better submissions in the past here. But just using the starter, uh, just taking the average, we got a uh, sixth place. Uh, a, and probably this takes sixth over all those other folks because they haven't noticed this little nuance where some player who's playing a phony on turn 19, it, turn 20 is the removal of turn 19. You just negate 19 and there you go. That's turn 20. Um, but yeah, that nuance aside, um, I don't know. Uh, to progress further, you'd probably actually need to take a look at the 30 days of machine learning Kaggle challenge. And um, with that 30 days of ML, uh, make use of NumPy somehow. Load some of this data into uh, like a random forest or some other sort of uh, machine learning model. And from that, produce, um, you'd have to extract many attributes out of the test data. So here we see the test data. Here's the player name on turn, the rack, the location, what the play was, and how many points it scored. And so you could actually build up a board, visualize the board, import all its features, as well as whatever features you think are of interest about the rack. And as well as whatever external data you want to load, in, uh, load into the model too. Like if you think that a blank or an S somehow impacts the score on a turn, um, yeah, use that information somehow. Input all of these variables into this really complex model. Have the complex model produce um, the expected points on turn 20. That's the goal. A uh, complex model might have to, in uh, I mean, so the thing that's kind of crazy here is that the object of this competition is to predict the points on turn 20, and that one of the players is a bot, and you could download the source code for the bot and literally run it on turn 20 for every one of these and probably get really, really close to uh, what the bot actually scored each time. But humans might be less predictable than the bot. 
Maybe. Maybe not. Who knows? Um, so, yeah, we've burned an hour here looking at this together. I was glad I was able to make some progress on this, and it's occurring to me just what... I don't know. Um, I was expecting this to not perform well at all. So this model here, this notebook, scored 19.71. There are people in this competition um, who are giving this a serious attempt who underperformed this model. So, um, yeah, including the gentleman who generously produced the notebook that I copied. Um, he didn't maybe notice this uh, anomaly that plays are negated. So that might be why I'm slightly outperforming him, at least at present. So, yeah, there are folks who are trying this seriously. Uh, there are folks who have underperformed or equally performed to the sample submission that maybe aren't as serious or just learning. But, um, yeah, there's no prize here other than pride. I was idly curious whether or not this stupid approach of just taking the average would outperform my really complex thing. I was prepared to be somewhat upset over that because I put in a good amount of effort doing some uh, parameter tuning on a really complex model. Um, and I was hoping that a more general model could outperform it, but that's not what happened here. So I need to add more parameters to this general model and see if it can outperform what we've done so far. It's promising that this like scores under 20, and the root mean square error here is 20. Uh, there are three possibilities what could have happened with this um, test that we just did. It scored 19.71. So one possibility is that it would have trounced this and like scored 18 root mean square error or less. Uh, another possibility is what happened here where it's similar, but in, in this case it didn't quite outperform my model. And third possibility would be that just taking the average would score about the same as the dummy submission that just takes the average of everything and just says players are always going to score 28 points on turn 20. Um, it would be amazing if that happened, but yeah, so um, neither spectacular thing happened here. The mediocre and predictable thing did happen. And uh, it's slightly encouraging, but it lets me know that um, there's a lot of work ahead producing a complex model. And um, yeah, I'm not quite interested in pursuing this further, although I will watch the discussion and leaderboard and so forth. Um, if I can, I'll like to upload my notebook here. Yeah, so can I upload mine here? Can I not? I have no idea. Um, I can edit it. I can download it. I can open it in Google Cloud. But if I'm looking at all notebooks, all notebooks sorted by hotness doesn't include my notebook. What if I try to include it? Then does all include mine? Or does all never include your own work? Fuck if I know. This stuff is confusing. But um, I'm upvoting my own notebook. Anybody knows, like, where's the magic button to... I don't know, man. You can always make a new notebook, but I'm trying to share my work with other folks. Without, I don't know. Uh, someday I'd like to see a generalized model for a couple things. One... What should the value of each tile be? And two, um, how likely is a player to generate a bonus or a bingo? 
to play all seven tiles from the rack onto the board. Because people have an intuition for this sort of thing, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know. I'd like to be able, just as a human player, to see if there are factors to reference other than word knowledge. Things for a lazy person or somebody trying to teach a whole bunch of beginners who may or may not be lazy. Um, just watch out for this, and this is like the one or two things you have to watch out for, and you'll do better. Um, be nice to have a training model that could say for an individual player, here's the sorts of things you can improve at specifically that you do differently than other players do. I know that Hasbro and others have produced software for various uh, platforms. I might still have my Scrabble installs media here. And yeah, there's some cool training materials. They give you ideas. I don't know how personalized the training is, but the better models that are available, the better we can train players to, you know, learn this great game. As much as, like, I don't necessarily agree with every player about the nuances of the lexicon, I don't necessarily agree on a lot of things with a lot of folks. Um, like, I would like to see some variation of this game that had different RNG. And I don't know how that's going to be achieved, but once the game gets really popular, they're going to have to find a way to make it, I don't know, um, not so difficult. Right now, the board game is quite difficult, but folks don't realize it because they don't play it a lot because it's difficult. It's just crazy. And, you know, I would like maybe someday to go to tournaments or other events about this. But then I look at the tournament rules and I see, well, you can't have a book open while you're playing the game. You can't have a cheat sheet with you while you're playing the game. And I'm like, okay, that's a rule. But, like, if we're trying to encourage the greatest possible participation, we have to have the best possible tools for players. We have to help them collaborate with each other. And I don't know. There's got to be some better way forward than things that have been tried so far. So far, people quarrel over a lot of things. But anyway, we don't need to belabor that now. Um, yeah, so this challenge is out there on Kaggle. If you want to try your hand at it, have a go at it. Again, the object is simply predict um, based on the data files. So the data files contain training data, so like complete training games, test data, which are games up to turn 19, plus the player's name on turn 20, plus whatever the player's rack is on turn 20. So um, we've got all these. Um, so based on those training and test, and I mean, they have other files that tell you the total game score and who's playing which game and player ratings and stuff like that. But yeah, based on all this, um, yeah, just uh, go at it, have fun. There was a data file that I kind of ignored. Um, so, as we were just taking the average that players scored on turn 20, one thing I did not consider uh, was the player rating. So, wait, I thought this was the file that had the player ratings in it. It's not. Oh, that's fun. There's also a lexicon attribute here that I didn't account for either. So, I mean, yeah, if you want to... I kind of want to go in there. Uh, to modify my existing starter. And within this, right now it, it's not broken down by lexicon. And I think I could do slightly better, couldn't I? So right now I'm grouping by... Crap. So... Wait. Yeah, if I wanted to edit this, I'd have to hit the edit button. I think I could fit. 
lexicon related information into this model. It wouldn't be that hard, hopefully. Right now we're indexing solely based on... Hmm. Hmm. Where is my group by? Oh, here's the group by on the right. Um, Oh, but the attribute of interest here, the lexicon, is not in the training file. Right? You remember, we were just looking a second ago at the training file, and it just doesn't have the lexicon in it. So, yeah. That's actually not trivial to augment into the model. So, if somebody wants to have a go at it, figure out how to add another column here. Um, yeah, by all means, do so. Yeah, that's discouraging. So, oh, scores here evidently is the file that has the player ratings in the scores file. And then this games file doesn't have the player ratings in it, I guess. I don't know. How this is broken apart. But here we have rating and game duration and initial time and overtime. Um, but this doesn't have lexicon in it either. This is just other game data. I thought there was a file here that did have lexicon. So bizarre. Hmm. Oh, there it is, right there. Games lexicon. So here we have game ID. Here we have game lexicon. Uh, if we really wanted to, we could determine for each game what the lexicon is. But um, uh. Yeah, unfortunately, this model doesn't have that kind of information in it. I don't know how to augment the projection. Uh, add column with expression or pointer or value or something. Um, Okay, so <laughs> add column with name marks. I mean, this could work. That's not terrible. Yeah. Data frame object column name is equal, and then you have to give the list of all the values to add. Um. So as long as yeah, all these game IDs are exactly lined up, I don't think they are. But if they did line up one to one, oh, I'm sorry, I can easily get the list. Never mind. This is a pain in the ass, but it's doable. Um. So, let me do one other thing. Here I'm getting, this is out of the test data. Getting the names on turns 19 and 20. Um, yeah, that's fine. So, 
what I'm wanting to augment is actually train here, but no, also test. Um, yeah, so before we do that, this sucks a lot, but um, all right, so here this prints out the train. Um, but I'm wanting to augment train here first. So here we have a notion of doing something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's not out of test that we want to extract this, it's out of games. And here, we're wanting a tuple, which is going to contain uh, the game ID, which is zero. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, yeah. And then we want to augment train to contain, uh, let's see. Hmm. Wait, but I'm wanting to turn this into a map. So let me first see. I just run this. Is this valid? Is this valid and does it give me back anything of interest? Yeah, okay. Now how do I convert this into a dictionary? Oh! Oh yeah, I checked the VOD afterward. Congrats! Um, yeah, while you were solving that uh, the tools I used found that you needed at least 81 ply. It would not be possible any faster than 81. However, it didn't yield a solution. It just counted up moving all of these pieces from the initial position to that, that at least 81 ply were required. But it didn't actually give a solution. Um, anyway. Welcome. Um, so let's see. How do I convert a list of tuples to a dictionary? Is this zip that does no? Zip would be taking two lists and producing a list of tuples. How do I convert this list of tuples into a dictionary. Yeah. How do we do it? What? Hmm. Oh. Really? I mean, that works. With the default dict, sure. Okay. Or just a normal dictionary, too. That's fine. Interesting. Um, well, that sucks. <laughs> Why is this so difficult? I guess... 
whatever. Oh wait, dict, and then there, you put the list into the dict, and there you go. There we go, that's exactly what I was looking for. Why? It's so confusing. Um... There we go. There's a dictionary. Now what we're looking to do is append to um, this list of training data um, train at column lexicon is equal to complex expression or list here. Uh, do, do, do. Um, what a cell like game lexica at address game zero and that should put the lexicon in there <laughs> that would have been too easy um that would have been too easy why does this not work though length of values does not match length of index Fair enough. I suppose I could print out this sort of thing. So we could see, yep. Yeah. Hmm. <sighs> Man, it would have been nice if augmenting our data were so simple. But yeah, length of values mismatch. Oh! Oh, crap. Um, yeah, no, I'm wanting to augment for turn in train. I don't remember where exactly inside train the game ID appears. Oh, it's at uh, turn sub zero. Sure. Let's try that again. Yeah, so now we got the lexicon in there. That wasn't so hard. Um, and then, you know, we'll bundle uh, the lexicon in here as well. So, there we go. Lexicon is now an attribute that's available. So, that's nice. Um, I mean, we could take other attributes out of the games list here. Like, uh, goodness. I mean, any of these potentially could be useful. But I think lexicons available even on those where your task is to predict the turn on score 20. Um, rating mode rated or not rated? Sure, we could add rating mode on there. I don't know. Not sure how many of these things will matter other than the lexicon. But the lexicon will matter, so let's include it. Um, I guess we could put first in there too. 
So game first is the next attribute. Um, Okay. I guess instead of getting fancy, let's get unfancy and our code a little easier to read. And maybe this will be fine. There we go. So we have who played first and what lexicon was used. Now embedded into every row of the training data. It's overkill, but eh, good enough. It makes accessing the data easier in the case where we eat, want to access it. So. Uh, yes, there is a standardized format for game export. I think it's called GCG. So thank goodness for that. Um, and it works for OMG words as well as Scrabble. So what have we here? Ah, right, so we had human average and player average. And I wanted to subdivide this based on lexicon. Because right now I have this key on nickname. And... I'm not sure how this is going to function now that I group on multiple elements here. Okay, well... They're available here in the key. Um, but the rest of this code ain't going to run. Right? This couldn't possibly run, because I just changed the key of this other thing. What do I know? Perhaps I don't want to do it this way, just because... Leads to more code complexity. Sure. Um, let's just have more data structures here. So, yeah, human. Goodness. Um, also, I don't think I care too much about CSW19 or which year is used in the lexicon. So... Um, yeah, we're just going to strip out uh, first three characters there. CSW, NWL. All right. Um, so CSW. Goodness, so many attributes. Turn number between 18 and 22. Uh, and lexicon is equal to CSW, etc. And then we're going to add something in here about the lexicon is not equal to CSW. 
and just pretend that there are only two dictionaries. There are Collins and the North American word list. Um, and while this is probably inaccurate, you know, it's close enough for probably most of the data. All right, so next, um, so does this run? Oh, invalid syntax on line two. I'm surprised it's invalid syntax on line two and not on line one. Like, how did I get line one correct and line two incorrect? That's how. I had a typo. Uh, human AVG CSW. Oh. AVG is just a little too noisy. Alright, so there we go. Average points per player per category. Good enough for me. Um, so the next deal is... Uh, right. Hum player AVG and human AVG. Let's see. Um, games, oh crap, how do I get the lexicon out of this? Wait, no, I'm going, iterating through name 20. Name 20 doesn't include other attributes, such as our lexicon. <sighs> All right. Um, so I gotta scroll way the hell up here to see um, our test data. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Attribute ten is going to be our lexicon. All right. Um, hmm. All right, so for um, name lexicon, first of all, name lexicon are equal to name lexicon. I don't know if there's a better way to decompose that. Um, instead of player average, it's going to be player CSW. Um, hang on. I'll put an expression on the right here. If ASD of else, some other expression, player NWL. You mind some players might choose to play CEL or some other dictionary, but uh, let's see if lexicon is equal to CSW. Um, let's 
All right, does this run? Probably not. Nothing ever runs the first time. Tuple index out of range. All right, if we try to run all, is that tuple index still out of range? Probably. Cannot unpack non-iterable int object. Hang on. Let's print this thing that is unpack not possible to unpack. What's the thing that we can't unpack? Two. Okay, I could see why two might not be possible to unpack. How it is that two made its way into here, I have no idea. But yeah, I agree that two is something we can't unpack. Um, fine. We're going to change it back. Um, And in case somehow they change the, the dictionary they're using on that term. That's so weird. Um, I'm not sure if I need this indexed this way. There might be an easier way to get access to it. Um, lexicon is not defined. Oh, right. So... I'd like to imagine, wait, don't I already have a data structure way the hell up here? Yeah, that's a dictionary of lexica per game. So I don't need another data structure with that same information represented differently. Let's try that. Uh, run all? Yeah, I got rid of my print statement. Otherwise, this would be stuck. And how's this doing? <laughs> All right. Wait a second. So... Do you know how much better bot scores? It's looking like 28 for most games. 27 for some games. I don't know. But BetterBot probably scores differently based on which dictionary it's working with. Um, mm -hmm. That's probably as good as we're going to get for now. I don't really know. I can't see from here what lexicon was used, but um, I don't know. I'm not really intending to do further coding right now, so I might as well submit my result. Let's save this as version 3. Sure, why not? So we got our OMG words starter. It's going to run all of these uh, programming cells. Compute the average score of a turn between turns 18 and 22, and so on and so forth. Maybe there is a performance improvement if you were to do the lexicon comparison first and then check all the rest. 
I don't know, maybe there's some other way to aggregate information based on which dictionary we're dealing with. Um, beats me. But yeah, probably the bot scores differently based on which dictionary is being applied. It's actually failed. What about this failed, I wonder? Uh, player AVG is undefined. Okay. So somewhere I have invalid code in this mess. Uh, oh, right. Um, <laughs> Ah, okay. So let's see. L if uh, lexicon is equal to CSW and the player name is in CSW. Then we should use, uh, yeah, there we go. Um, this overly complicated expression is no longer required. Ditto this, can just use NWL. Um, let's see. Hmm. Yeah, I want to take this expression and put it first. Because I'm assuming things will perform better this way. Because um, half the entries will satisfy this criterion. The other half will not satisfy it. Well... Hmm. No, let's leave it how I had it the first time. Because like 90% something of these rows won't satisfy both the turn numbers greater than this and less than that. So, yeah, this should work. I should see a submission at the end of this. There's a submission. No errors spotted this time. Oh my goodness. Are you kidding me? Really? Well, I'm going to copy this code block. Cause it's the one I changed. Failed to save draft. All right, we're going to leave this tab. So. I'm not impressed. But yeah, we're going to apply our fix back over here and save it again. Run all. Certainly my active tab should take precedence over, I don't know. I'm actively working on a thing. You know? Don't overwrite my changes, bro. All right. Well, good enough, I suppose. Yeah, we do have a file at the end of this. All right. Uh, sure. Version 4. Save and run all. And we're just going to forget that version 3 ever existed. And hopefully 4 does run. Let's open that in a viewer to see it running with this beautiful spinning dial that lets us know that something is happening. Maybe. Maybe not. Hmm. And yeah, then we're going to submit this and be done with it for today. And yeah. If you want to do real machine learning, 
it, there's just a lot of data sanitization that has to take place for your results to be even remotely useful. So, um, yeah, this looks okay to me. Let's submit it as it stands right now. And maybe in the future we'll do something more advanced, but probably not. Um, no, wait. Shouldn't I see a submit button since I have a submission file? Why does this have to be so difficult? Okay, here's the data file. I could download this. Oh, here's the submission button. It's like they duct taped it all together. I mean, it's good that it works. It's just the duct tape is most unpleasant to work with. Um, all right, so there's our submission 19.71151. Our previous submission today was 1971572. Let's take a quick look at the leaderboard. It's 197 still does not compare to my homegrown model. So yeah, just simply taking averages is not enough to predict um, the score on turn 20. So uh, taking la averages per lexicon is not enough. Um, you actually need to probably take a look at what the player's rack is to do something halfway intelligent about it. But 19.71 does put us um, in sixth place. My homegrown model score is better, so we're going to stick with it. But yeah, maybe next week or the week after or something, I might try another go at this. See if I can score better. Just out of fun. And because like, at some point, I do want to see what can we learn about the game without actually playing it because you could play it for 10,000 hours and learn some things. Or you could just have a machine do like 10,000 hours of computation, and you could take a look at the results and figure out, um, is there anything we can glean from this mess? Um, although, realistically, you're probably spending a lot of time writing the simulation code and maintaining it and testing it and all that stuff, but anyway... Yeah, I'm amused that uh, this rather primitive model can score in sixth place. And I welcome others to try to find my code, because I'm trying to list it here, and it's not listing. I would list it if it were possible for me to list the thing. I don't know how to list it. I bookmarked my starter. You know, I'd like to think I'm trying to make this accessible, available to folks, so you can see how I did it. Uh, it is kind of impressive just how far you can go just taking the averages per player, per lexicon, and just assuming that players are always going to score the same as their average. It's pretty amusing that you can get tremendously far this way. Um, but yeah, I wonder if it's possible to do better. I don't know. Anyway, I hope we enjoyed this little exploration here today, and we'll see you next time.